Hello and welcome to Homeowner Talk. My name is David Stone and I'm the president of Nevada Association Services. And this is my co-host, John Leach, who is a partner in the law firm of Leach, Johnson, Song & Gruco. Each episode, we'll be here to talk with you about important homeowner topics. Whether they involve homeowner association issues or homeowner maintenance problems, we, along with our guests, are here to provide you with useful information on these subjects. We also want to encourage you to interact with us and our guests each episode, so please visit our website at homeownertalktv.com and send us your questions, and we'll try to answer as many of your questions as we can on the air. Uh, on today's show, we're going to be talking about asso homeowner association collection issues, and we have the privilege of having Debbie Kluska, the collection supervisor in Nevada Association Services, with us. Debbie, thanks for joining us. Hi, John. How are you? Very good. Why don't you tell our viewers just a little bit about yourself, how you got to Las Vegas, and what, how in the world did you get into collections? That's all seen so long ago. About 14 years ago, I actually moved to Nevada with my family from the East Coast. Uh, took a job working at a homeowners association here in Las Vegas, a master plan community on the Northwest. And I started learning about homeowners associations and the um, importance of collections. A lot of the issues that they were having out there with the community were maintaining a, a budget. A lot of homeowners weren't paying their assessments. Uh, I found it very fascinating. Homeowners associations are a lot more prevalent here on the East Coast, I mean, sorry, on the West Coast rather than on the East Coast. Um, started working as on doing property management, started having people like David Stone and other people in the industry come in and meet with the boards, uh, talking about ways that we could get their assessments in check, so to speak. About four years later, I actually got very interested in the collection aspect of management and how important that is for the community. The community can't function with even a small percentage of delinquencies. So I started working at Nevada Association Services and learned the um, foreclosure process and the, the non-judicial process. All right, we appreciate sharing that with us. And I, I don't think there's anything more timely today than, than the, the issue of collections. Um, as we're all familiar with today, the economy has sagged, and with that, become come deficiencies are much higher today than they were probably even back in your early days when you're working with that other homeowners association. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the collection process. How you know uh, so most associations out there have delinquencies, homeowners who are not paying assessments, and ironically, some of those homeowners are banks or entities that aren't paying their assessments. And as you pointed out, it's awful hard for uh, 60 or 70 or 80 percent of the homeowners to pay 100 percent of the expenses. Correct. So maybe you can share with our viewers maybe the process that, that they would, an association would go through to effectively collect their assessments. Sure. First of all, it's extremely important to have a healthy collection policy in place and to have a management company or if you're self-managed, someone really staying on top of it. You don't want to wait too long before you take care of your delinquencies. Um, initially, it's very important to secure the debt with a notice of delinquent assessment lien. That, that puts the association in, you know, in a good place to be able to recover the money. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, you prepared a little chart for our viewers to take a look at maybe the process and we can outline it. Maybe we can put that up on the sure. screen for our homeowner, our viewers to take a look at. Maybe you can just tell them a little bit about the process here. Thank you. Initially, what we do is we send out a demand letter that explains why the owner is actually in collections, it gives them certain rights by law and informs them that if they choose not to pay their debt, there will be a notice of delinquent assessment lien recorded. Now I notice on there it says 10 days. Uh, I, I suppose the board could give them a longer period of time, but that's a reasonable period The board period can, of time. but a federal law allows us to proceed with collections after 10 days of initially notifying the homeowner. Okay, so this is in compliance with the law. Correct. And then the notice of delinquent assessment lien, and, and that's the actual recordation of the notice telling the people that, or the rest of the world, I guess, that there's a delinquency. Exactly. Okay. Now, the next step, I noticed, was a notice of, of, of default. Correct. And maybe you can describe for our viewers the importance of that notice of default and what it means. Sure. The notice of default basically starts the foreclosure action. It's the commencement of foreclosure. We're recording a document stating that the homeowner has defaulted on their lien. And the recordation of the notice of default gives the homeowner 90 days to reinstate with the collection company or the association. 
If they do, do not choose to reinstate, then ultimately the association could decide to set a foreclosure sale on their property. And if I recall on the chart there, the next step after the notice of default was a notice of sale. Correct. And, and what's the purpose of the notice of sale? The purpose of the notice of sale, um, there's a few purposes. One, statutorily we're required to record a notice of sale. It gives any lien holders knowledge that the property is in default and subject to a foreclosure sale. It notifies um, if they have a first mortgage, second mortgage, these people are notified and may put a little additional um, pressure or communication with the homeowner to get the debt paid. How many of these actually go to sale? Because I think a lot of our viewers are probably out there sitting, well, gee whiz, we don't want to foreclose on anybody. Now, the foreclosure is very similar to a foreclosure that a bank would, would go through. Correct. But from what I understand, it's not very common where the association will actually foreclose on, Correct. on a home. Correct. We do very few. And recording the notice of sale actually prompts a lot of communication with the homeowner. Sometimes there's vacant properties, a neighbor may see the notice, or there may be a, um, someone in the property going to visit the property. And they may notice that we have a lot of absentee owners. So, and that could probably, I'm assuming, be very persuasive to a homeowner that's not correct. paying. Because under the statute, they get served potentially the notice. It could be served with them by a process server or posted on their front door. Correct. So someone that thinks that there's nothing is going to happen, sometimes it can be a bit persuasive to the homeowner to convince them, you know what, you should probably pay at this point. Oh, it's point. extremely persuasive, definitely. So from beginning to end, I noticed you were from our demand letter to our lien, 30 days, notice of default, 90 days, notice of sale. Generally, we're looking about a, from beginning to end, maybe a six-month process, something? Correct. Uh, and so I guess, our, I guess the Homeless Association boards need to understand that it's important to get the process started because that process is what usually generates the revenue or the collection. If you postpone it too long, then the rent gets larger and you may not, you know, it just postpones receiving the money. Definitely. Are you finding any correlation between, like, are, do you get most of the money when the demand letter goes out? Or are you finding that maybe the notice of lien? It varies. So it's, it varies. What we do get a lot of people contacting us wanting to pay their assessments. They want to enter on, into a payment agreement. They may be kind of embarrassed to contact their homeowners association and talk about them being behind or so they you know at this point they get a letter from the collection agency they contact us and we work out payment arrangements all of our clients you know love that idea how often do uh, 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 as far as percentage goes do most of the homeowners uh, go on to payment plans and how does that work um, as far as getting them paid off on their account is that successful for the homeowners association definitely they see money right away rather than you know, going through the, the process or, you know, we send money to the associations on a monthly basis. Payment plans, um, you know, are normally scheduled on a monthly basis and, you know, money is turned over timely. And the homeowners... And the association that can begin, you know, paying their vendors or paying people that they haven't been able to pay. And the associations don't want to foreclose on anybody. They just want, they just want the funds. So if oh, someone's exactly. calling up for a payment plan, they're somewhat excited they're at that point. They're extremely I'm agreeable. That, yeah. And would so love to engage in a payment well. arrangement. I know we, we get a lot of questions at the office about, well, should we foreclose? It's HOA saying, well, should we go ahead and actually purchase the property at the foreclosure sale? And it's always a tough question because, I mean, they're not in the business to own property. They, as you said, David, they don't want to own the property. They're Definitely. only doing it, doing it as a means to get the collection. And in today's economy and market, there are not as many positives in actually acquiring the title of the property because of the other company expenditures and things of that nature. But it, it is a it's critical consideration. And there's a lot Correct. more to discuss on this than we can take in just a few minutes uh, right now. So what do you recommend to a board that um, is sort of confused about this process and really needs the advice? Do you go to board meetings and will you consult with the associations? Oh, and definitely. That's a very them? interesting actually part of my job. You know, being a former community manager, it's very nice to sit on the other end of the table mm -hmm. and speak to community managers and board members and give them advice on, you know, how to move forward with their collections. How, how soon in the process should the collection agency be consulted? The demand letter, how, how soon? It depends on the association's collection policy. You know, a lot of associations have, you know, a 60 or 90 day collection policy. You know, once the homeowner has not paid their assessments for that amount of time, I think they should consult the collection company, you know, immediately. 